So, I'm back with my field tech today. And I have a bit of a problem. I had it set up on a test rig where I was blowing, bringing in an amplifier. It was running for about a day and a half, just doing the chirp sequence, moving from each channel, one, two, three, one, two, three, back and forth on a sweep into the different outputs of the tube amp. Came in the next day after the third run, so it was a three day run. And on the third day, my channel one wasn't working. So, being under warranty, I went off to the company and they sent me back an email after I think that they told me to open it up and look at the chip inside, as you can see from the picture I'm going to show you in a second. So, let's start voiding warranties and try to open this thing up. So while I'm disassembling my signal generator, I think this is a good opportunity to look at some of the emails that I sent between myself and Felelec trying to get service for this particular item. It turned into quite the epic, more than a few months, shall we say, which is actually an improvement over from what I've read online. It seems they've never had a service department or even someone who pretended to be a service department or even a technician. Emails would go unanswered forever. So let's see where this takes us. This all goes back to February 24th, 21, when I sent them the first email. I basically just detailed what I was doing and the problem I was having. I even included a nice trace from my oscilloscope of the channel that was giving me the funny results. And then I waited to see what would happen. I figure I didn't have anything to lose because supposedly it was still under warranty for a full year. Well, almost a full month later, I finally heard back from them. They said they were happy to take it back if I would just ship it to them. I then explained to them that it actually would cost more to ship that particular item from Canada to China than it would to buy a new one. So I asked them if they could send me some technical details and maybe I'd be able to fix the problem myself. After they finally agreed to send the problem off to the tech for some advice, I waited about another week or so. Then they sent me the question asking me what I was doing when the device failed. Well, I just basically reset what I had done before. Well, this time around, they got back to me rather quickly in a day or so. With this uh, picture and the following message, asking me if I would please swap out the chip in channel 1 with the chip in channel 2 to see what the result would be. At least with that image, I was getting an idea of where the differing channels were going in and out. I kind of balked at the idea of swapping out chips, because you think to yourself, now, do I take my two-channel signal generator, bop some things around, and suddenly get a one-channel signal generator if I make a mistake? Well, the emails flew fast and furious for the next few days, and eventually I convinced them that maybe I should just take a bunch of test values all over the board, and they agreed to that, sent me this picture of where to test, and then I diligently sent all the test results in, which you see me doing in the next segment. So, just carrying on from what the instructions were giving me the other day. I've just gone through and probed all these little guys. I got one last one to do. So what I did was I probed this channel, that channel, and each of the ones. And write down all the values there. And the probing was quite simple. You just stick your little really nice easy hook right on there like that so that's channel 5 negative 1.6 so that's what they wanted me to do so definitely turn this off now click So looking at the results, 19.3 millivolts versus 70. So pin 1 must be the output. Pin 8 must be the positive rail. Pin 4, the negative rail, the inverted input. So you can see 3 millivolts versus 13.8, 1.2 versus 13.9. So definitely screwed. So now, 
I have to get back to them tomorrow, table that up and email it to them tonight, and then I should finally be able to fix this thing. They said they'd send me a new one of those. Who knows? I might be able to fix it. So I diligently wrote up the email, all nice and neat with tables and graphs and all the fun stuff, and pressed send. And instantly I got this response, minus the flames, of course. I couldn't for the life of me figure out what laws or policies I was violating, as there is absolutely nothing controversial in that email I sent them. It took me a day or so to figure out that I had misspelled sign, S-I-N-E, with S-I-N, sin. Well, I made that change, and the message immediately went. Well, it's the first time I ever ran into the Great Firewall of China. Just watch out. Every time you drop an E in the word sign, Baby Mao cries. Well, they got back to me right away, and they still wanted me to swap out the chip. Well, I figured in for a penny, in for a pound. I might as well do the swap. Anyway, it gives me a good excuse to pick up that hot air rework station I saw in Kijiji the other day. Special flux. Okay, that's the other side lifted. There we go. Woo, it's hot. Side off. And the other side. There we go. Well, one thing to do when you're doing this kind of thing is just do a quick solder check. Make sure you didn't get any balls under there. All you have to do is touch one after another. Yes, that has a waveform. Again, back with the inductors. Which would be that one right there. Well, in the end, all that swap out accomplished was to confirm the fact that the chip in channel 1 is defective. Well, after a whole bunch of more emails going back and forth, I finally got some sort of definitive answer from them in a May 21st email, where they sent me this picture and told me that the AD8009 chip was most likely defective and I should swap it out for a new one. So I tried to order up a few extra AD8009s, only to discover that the worldwide stock was rather depleted of that chip and the price for them has gone sky high. I eventually did find one at a reasonable price, but much, much, much later. So here it is at the end of September, and my chips finally arrived. So there you have it, the global chip shortage of 2021 in action. So I guess all there is to do now is to do that final swap out and see what happens. Okay, maestro, take us away with a little royalty-free soldering and desoldering music. <laughs>
Let's plug in here. Turn on the old oscilloscope. Okay. Let's zoom out a little more so we see what's going on. When I throw the switch. Clickety click. Well, well, guess what? We are getting signal. And there was much rejoicing. There's five volts. We'll flip to six volts. And it pops down to 1.2. Ah! The wave is getting worse and worse as we go along. So definitely that chip one is dead. And that's about it. We'll have to see what happens next. What the hell is that smoke doing? Shit!